What is going on guys? New merch alert. Before we get started, I'm not wearing it right now because I don't like to get my new stuff stinky. I forgot to mention it last video, we dropped the most comfortable shorts you will ever put your butt cheeks in. Swear on my life, they're the most comfortable you'll ever feel. We've also got a new hat, new shirt, we got a bunch of stuff, so head over to 53supply.com and then head back to this video. Just go check it out, do me a favor to check it out. Also, little update. If you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which I mention that a lot, you guys should just follow me on Instagram and Twitter. We're looking for a new car for uh, Victoria, like a daily that she can just beat around and use for 5.3 supply, like dropping off orders and stuff. I really want to trade the Tahoe for a diesel truck. I'd love to do a diesel build, but we don't need two huge cars. I posted that we found her a really cool car. That really cool car was an Acura TSX wagon. And so that's like a super uncommon car, at least here in the US. And I was really excited about it, but talking to the dealership and they just want way too much for it. So we're trying to talk them down a little bit. Anyways, by the time you are watching this video, we're either gonna have it or we're not. You guys just follow me on Instagram and, and, uh, and Twitter, I'll let you guys know. But that's just something we got going on. That'd be a really cool, fun car. We can modify it a little bit, but um, again, I'm not a cheap person, but I like to get the best bang for my buck and they're asking a lot of money for it. It's time for this 2JZ to make a comeback story. A lot of people underestimate their factory 2JZ car. You can make it look so nice. Six and a half hours later. So I just about committed die. <laughs> it's difficult enough when, when it's actually off of the car, but this intake manifold is such a chotch to get off. This very bottom part right here literally probably took me an hour and a half to get off. What's really dumb is they run the wiring harness through the middle right there, just like that, and it plugs into, there's an oil, I'm gonna assume this is like an oil pressure sensor or something deep down there, and then it also plugs into the starter, so it's like really stupid. I don't know who designed all this garbage, but Bad idea. We are definitely pressed for space, so I'm really hoping that I can get the deep motor intake manifold in here. Um, not only, I mean, I, I'm sure it'll fit, but like with all the wire, like this is, like the way that they did the wiring harness in this car is so, just makes me so uncomfortable and unhappy. But let's go ahead and grab this intake manifold. We know that the exhaust manifold fits, but uh, I also just want to see, just test fit this guy and just see how it looks in there. Um, before you get the intake manifold on, you want to make sure that all the gaskets and everything are in correctly. You wanna make sure this is either used or plugged, and these are all gonna be vacuum lines. The thing I really love about JZ manifolds, especially opposed to the RB, is that there is no water at all in the intake manifold. There's no cooling involved in it. Because you don't freaking need the cool intake manifold, dude. You don't need freaking coolant to go in your intake manifold. Before we even come close to getting started though, um, I'm gonna go ahead and assume, I know for a fact I'm gonna have to remove this. What the hell is this freaking, what is this? Okay, that is the whole ass, is that the ECU? There's no way the ECU is right there. Oh my God, that's the ECU. What? So am I gonna have to relocate all of this garb? What is this doing? Is this to cool the ECU? It sure is. Well, that is really intriguing. Um, by intriguing, really weird, and I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm gonna be honest, this is as close as I can get this thing to fitting without completely removing the ECU, removing the wire harness. Um, which is very weird because I've, I've done a lot of 2J cars. You assume at some point every car is similar, but you know, that's just a terrible idea to do that. This box right here is going to have to be relocated and I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I might have to buy a wiring harness and that might set the project back a couple of weeks, which is fine because I have three cars coming or two cars coming and the shop to be built, so whatever. I would like to think that this is easily relocatable, but I don't honestly think that that's, the case. <laughs> kind of flabbergasted. I might have to call my friend Drew and have him extend the harness for me or something. The weird thing about this car too is, I, I did know this, this is like a body control module along with the ECU. So anytime you get a standalone ECU, you don't piggyback it off the ECU. It's still a standalone, but you have to use the body module for the gauges and all the other stuff to make sure everything else works. It is what it is though. I mean, I did the same thing with my 350Z whenever I did the LS swap and all that kind of thing. So right now, this is being super weird. I honestly, I just can't get it down because I can't, well for one, I can't get it past this. And two, it's actually hitting the uh, AC line right there. And so I'm gonna have to remove all of this wiring, I guess. I'm gonna have to remove this no matter what. The intercooler has to go somewhere. 
but I think some people make a patch harness or an extension that's like three feet or so. What I might like to do is get one of my friends out here or just get a whole new wiring harness. I know obviously like boosting for cheap is the idea here, but stuff like this, you cannot cheap out on. You can have a friend that's really good at wiring come over and do that sort of thing, but ECU, cooling, and fueling are the three things you absolutely can never cheap out on. So everything else remains constant here, but I'm already gonna be getting a nice expensive standalone for this. So I might as well go ahead, uninstall all this kind of stuff, and wait till my boy can get here and help me out with this. What I'm now going to do is just give myself the pleasure of removing the entire freaking wiring harness out of the car. So my birthday is this month. How sick would it be if I could just get all my car friends together and have my birthday party inside my shop, if it's done. How sick would that be? Boy! Basically what I gotta do now is, uh, ex I gotta put the extendo on these guys right here and then somehow either relocate it, I'm not gonna relocate it further back. I'm probably just gonna put it in the car, so. We're gonna figure out a way to put this in the car, most likely passenger side, who knows, but I'm gonna keep this out for now because I don't need it for a long time. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shoot. It does have one very special boy. Okay, hello. It's got one very special boy sitting on the transmission. It's got, probably got two or three of those on the transmission, so this harness is not really like ready to come out, nor do I think it will because there are Hmm, 700 things over here. Look at them. Brake fluid, what the hell? There's a brake fluid cap in here? Somebody lost their damn brake fluid cap, bro. Boy. Many months later. We are good. Going to have, dude, my, I am nasty. I've already taken a shower today. I'm about to take like three. Two nuts. That's all you need in life. Best trick ever. You put two nuts together, right, on the stud. You back them up like this. You have to make the two nuts really, really tight. So that basically, when you start loosening up the back one, it has no choice but to take the entire stud out, because this one's so tight on this one. Just use two nuts on a stud. You don't have to buy stud extractors. Yes! I win. I win times two. It looks as if I have to clearance the engine bay in order to get this intake manifold to work, which is not like super abnormal. You have to do this all the time on Skylines. So it's not weird, it's not abnormal. I really didn't want to have to do it on this car, but it's not that big of a deal. Eventually. Okay, <laughs> so I did a little off camera mining, a little bit of spacing. And I mostly got it fitted up. It's definitely like, this is a definitely a really tight fit and I had to clearance that sidewall. Wasn't too hard. I'll have to shave that down and never repainting it a little bit. That's not bad. If it's okay, the factory power steering reservoir is super in the way, which I kind of figured it would be. Pretty sure it might just have to be relocated, which is not a huge deal. Uh, it's super, super easy to relocate those. I need to go ahead and just test fit everything because everything's gonna end up going on and then coming right back off because I'm gonna have to end up clearancing a lot of the stuff on this side, oh good lord have mercy. I need to just take all this out. Boom, and another reason why you're test fitting everything, I just completely proved the fact that power steering has to be relocated. Cause I'm keeping drive by wire, that's the best way ever. Like this throttle body cannot move unless this goes away. Which is fine because that stock location is kind of ugly and uh, I have so much room right here now that the ECU is not gonna be there that it will work just fine and I'll be able to put a power steering reservoir right there. Later. And the only way to really keep this go going was to completely remove said harness. So we have no harness in the car, which is fine. Here's the thing. This car could be running right now if I chose to do it the easy way. But I really wanted to do a nice looking NAT build because a lot of people, whenever they do NATs, which there's no problem with doing this, they just like to use the stock plenum. That's the ugliest freaking thing I've ever seen in my life and I don't want anybody to do that anymore. I'm dying, I guess. And what I want to do is just Get out of my comfort zone. Take the whole thing apart. You guys know how much I hate wiring, so this might be the first time I actually have to have a experience, um, a one-on-one -on -one bonding time with my wires in my car. Cause I can mess with manifolds and pain and this and that and lines and brakes and this all day long, but when it comes to wires, 
my pants crap themselves. This is not so bad. I'm honestly kind of excited to learn from this. So now I have a bunch of space, nothing's really in my way, and I can make this look incredibly clean. And I can also go through my engine bay and like really actually like scotch bright clean, really, really clean this thing out. But there's that, intake manifold is on. Now the two things I have to still do, <laughs> my poor hand. Oh, I'm just bleeding here, bleeding here. So this should give you a really good idea on what it takes to do a clean NAT build on a more modern day Lexus, especially the IS300. I've had tons of people that have modern 2JZ cars, or I'm gonna say modern, like modern retro 2JZ cars, I guess, that have been super interested in boosting their cars. Now here's a solution for you guys that don't wanna do all this, because this is a lot of work, and doing this alone is going to add three, four thousand dollars to the cost of the car, because one, you have to do a standalone. Two, you're gonna have to do a wiring harness. And three, obviously you're doing like some stuff to, you know, intake manifold and that sort of deal. And it does look sexy. And you gotta relocate a bunch of stuff and that's that's just how it is. So a solution for you guys who really wanna boost on a budget. You could get this kit. I think this CX Racing kit was like six, 1700 bucks. What you could do is, you could run this disgusting, nasty plenum just like this right here, okay? And, obvi and obviously, let's say the computer's right here, which it is on the IS300, you would never have to touch that. And because it is a mass airflow car, you do not have to do this, you don't have to relocate it, and you don't have to do standalone. You can go low boost, get a good boost controller, and you can let her rip for probably a really long time. Even though I'm still boosting on a budget, I'm doing everything really cool still on a budget. But remember what I told you, you can't cheap out on fuel, ECU, and cooling. And thankfully we're not having to touch cooling on this car at all, so that's awesome. The next steps are going to be to take everything back off and to paint the valve covers and clean the engine bay. I really want this to look nice. There's obviously lots of wire looms and there's some stuff in here that is and isn't necessary. I need to go ahead and tape up these brake lines and get a blanket on that turbo. But for just two like five, six hour work days on this, like it's looking pretty decent actually. Even though I'm having to dive a little bit further into this than I thought I was going to, I hope this series is helping any of you guys out there and uh, I'm trying to also provide solutions for you guys along the way that are not the same as what I'm doing right now because this is obviously pretty crazy. Before we go, obviously new merch alert. I want you guys to go check out the new stuff at Five Fish Supply. I also wanna let you guys know that I'm officially now a Griot's partner and I'm really excited. Griot's Garage is a really awesome brand. All of their detailing stuff is made in the USA and uh, by their own chemists, and that's what I detailed the Skyline with. And what I want you to know is if you use my code in the month of August for literally anything, if you use it once, twice, three times, if you spend $10 or $500, you're entered into winning their Master Car Kit, which is a $300 kit. So I'm gonna leave that link in the description for the month of August. It's gonna be a really good deal, and uh, if you need a really good Master Car Care Kit, or honestly, if you just need like a quick detail or something, Griot's has it all, and they're absolutely incredible. My advice for you guys today is to, I always like, I always try and like think of really good new stuff, but sometimes it's like, the more repetitive stuff is pretty good to hear. When life stumps you down, or whenever something gets in your way or something doesn't go your way, don't give up and don't stop. The most creative and the most successful people are not the people that just had things work out for them. The most creative and the most successful people out there are the people that turned problems into opportunities, made solutions out of the issues in their life, hopped over the obstacles. And I wanna encourage you guys, if something bad goes on in your life or something pops up that's just like, it's just not your way. Just know you have a chance to create that problem uh, and turn that problem into an opportunity. So that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with today. I love you guys, you have an amazing day and I'll see you guys for some more Jay-Z action and also we're starting the shop tomorrow. <laughs> Later guys. Hey, I got two videos for you, babe. What you can do is watch those two videos in front of you. It, seriously, it helps me a lot. And you can subscribe if you haven't already because if you're not subscribed, that's pretty dumb.